Bring in our think tank, um, Jamie White, you know, prosecutors have to do their job. They, you know, if they believe this is vigilante justice, which is what they believe, they can't turn a blind eye to it. You just can't. I mean, he went there with a gun. They shouldn't turn a blind eye. You know, I'm probably going to get trolled for saying this, but, you know, we're a nation of laws and, you know, this man was a monster, you know, but he did not know at the time that the young woman had been assaulted all these over all these years. All he knew was that he was a, a registered offender in the neighborhood. Um, you know, what if there was a bus full of children killed by a drunk driver? Do the parents have a right to go assassinate that person? At what point does a slippery slope become unsustainable? <clears throat> you know, I understand a little something about victims of sexual assault. I've represented hundreds of women and men in um, in, in a civil setting against institutions where they were held accountable for failure to protect. I was in the courtroom with 60 of my clients in the Larry Nasser case when a father jumped over the table and tried to kill Nasser with his bare hands, you know, and so I've seen it, I get it, I'm empathetic, um, but at the end of the day, you know, we're a system of laws. What's, what's been accomplished? We have a man who's never gotten in trouble before in jail facing first degree murder. And we have a perpetrator, if that's giving him a polite name, but a perpetrator who's gotten off light, in my opinion. You know, it would have been better had he gone to prison for a couple of life sentences and had to try to make friends in, in the facility. So I just think that we have to step back and understand these are the times to try our system. And this man is culpable. Does he deserve to go to prison for the rest of his life? Probably not. And if I was a prosecutor, Vinny, I'd probably cut him a pretty good deal. But we can't look the other way.